Top of the morning to you, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you may be watching. My name is Scott, I represent the SLN Game Slam, and I am here to bring you the next episode, whatever number it is, of the Pokemon Blue Nuzlocke. And just took care of a couple housekeeping items before we got to this beautiful building here. And I'll go over those as we do the team recap. So starting out, we have Abag the Magikarp, who is five levels away from actually being a relevant member of the team. Kevin the Pidgeotto, who now is a relevant member of the team in this newly evolved form. Still not a great move set, but that brings us to Jobin the Bellsprout. Very good attack and special stats, who was a key member in our gym battle last time. And the newly evolved Cornus Boy the Nido Queen, who is now a poison ground type. Much better stats than we're used to. And uh, still a weak move set as well. And it did break my heart that it cannot learn Dig for whatever reason. Last and certainly not least, we have Austin the Charmeleon, who has been probably the most consistent member of the team. But what I was saying about the housekeeping items is I went up, healed our Pokemon, deposited Dats right the Meow, sold our Nugget from Nugget Bridge, and picked up a few potions and paralyzed heals. So with that, we're going to walk into this strange building where this man says, I run a daycare. Would you like me to raise one of your Pokemon? And I actually forgot that this guy was actually here. Um, but I think it's a little cheeky to uh, to use a daycare in a Nuzlocke. I think we should be responsible for training up the members of the team. So while I don't think that is an official rule that you can't use a daycare in a Nuzlocke. Um, I am going to just neglect the old man. I hope his business continues. I hope that, uh, you know, I love small business. I used to work in a small business, but I will not be financially supporting his business. But we are in a new route, which means a new encounter, which means I am going to put somebody else in the lead. I'll put Kevin in the lead, and let's see what we encounter here. I think Oddish is an option, and probably a lot of duplicates. Pidgey has been in essentially every route. Um, but I want to say Oddish, maybe, maybe another grass type. Um, Meowth, so we have duplicates there. Um, what else could be here? What else could be here? If we get one more duplicates, I'll just jump into trainer battles and check the odds of the route because it's looking like a lot of the same. So instead of getting our encounter right at the moment, we will jump into some trainer battles and I will attempt to not only interrupt this private conversation, but find the route that we are in. Because they're definitely not as well numbered as I would like. Whoa, we are way too early to fight with him. Let's go to Kevin. Alright. Pokemon Gen 1 Route Above Vermilion. Alrighty. Vermilion City, Anto Route 1, Red and Blue Route 10, we'll see what we can find, we'll see what, we'll see what we see, as they say in the biz. But in the meantime, I am happy that we will continue training the team up, and I'm going to switch train, followed by... Switching Joben in here. Route 9 before Rock Tunnel, that's not what we want. Route 10, that is also not what we want. Um, I will try... It's, it's got to be either 7 or 8. I'm all locked in now. I will try 7. But our boy here can do some whipping of the vine variety. And hopefully not have too much trouble with this Pikachu. 
Not a fan of the crit, not a fan of the crit, but we should be fine to mop up here with one more Vine Whip. And that will be the end of Junior Trainer Girl who says, Ugh, I hate losing. As do we, but in the words of LeVar Ball, we have never lost. We have never lost. And this guy says, who's there? Quit listening in on us. Sorry, man, just trying to take your money. Is this the route we want? He has a Squirtle level 20, so is this an Everstone Squirtle? Is this an Everstone Squirtle? Perhaps. I can't even tell if that's the route. It's in, like, leaf green form. I don't think so. I don't think so. And also, we're gonna heal up here, obviously. No need to take chances. No need to take the chances. But we're eating that alive. We're eating these hits up. Ugh. Really not a fan of how they eat this out. Until Route 8. And that's by Lavender Town. Okay, this makes no sense. I'm, I'm giving up on looking that up this episode. I'm going to look at it off screen, but I think I tried looking at the town map before and it was just utterly helpless. So that's actually pretty annoying, but we will not be getting our encounter this episode because I don't want to waste time with duplicates and I don't want to waste time looking up what route number it is, which is, again, absolutely ridiculous, but Junior Trainer Boy says, I just can't win. So for the time being, we're just going to continue with this team. I don't see any hidden items, but there is a hidden trainer here. And he says there aren't many bugs out here, so I'm going to assume this is a bug catcher. And we are correct, thanks to my intel from Sergio. There is a bug catcher who wants to fight with a level 16 Weedle. We just saw Everstone Squirtle, and this may be an Everstone Weedle. Not a fan of bees. This is not a fan of Honey Nut Cheerios, if I've ever known one. The captain's gonna put in the work. These are really just nice battles to replenish our funds and also replenish our experience or add to our experience. But one thing I did want to talk about today, and we'll keep Kevin in because you're not getting a lot of experience from bugs anyways. Um, of course, this episode will be posted in 2019, starting the new year, which brings me to what I want to talk about today. What has been your favorite game of 2018? And just for the sake of the conversation, it does not need to be a game that came out in 2018. Um, the reason I'm adding that to the table is one, I know a few friends of the program do not have a new console. And also for my sake, I actually only have one game that came out in 2018. I bought more than just that game, but a couple were from 2017. So my favorite new game that came out in 2018 certainly is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. To me, that's a no-brainer. Um, but if I wanted to go through and just think about from the games I played this year, what my favorite gaming experience was in 2018, um, I, I would kick around a few more. So I believe there were four games I played through this year. Maybe five, but I think just four. Um, and one of them seemed to drag on forever, that being Pokemon Ultra Moon, um, which is at the bottom of those four. We know how I feel about that game. But the other three, we have two very new games, as well as one classic game. And I want to see how much this confusion does, because we're... 
we're okay for, for the Ember here to take him out. If we weren't in range there, I was going to Potion, because that are... Those are some biscuits we don't want to risk, but Abag getting some nice XP from that battle we defeat Bug Catcher. But to go over the games I was talking about... Yes, there are a couple more trainers here. Um, I'm just going to drop a few potions out here. Just a few. Uh, we'll give Austin a potion. And we will give Jobin a potion. So, there are two other new games that I played through. Um, one of them, of course, is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which I'm in the process of. And also, Super Mario Odyssey, pointing to the case that you can clearly not see here. Um, and I enjoyed both of those games exceptionally more than Pokemon Ultra Moon, which... I think I've stated on here before, I really felt was just like a DLC extension of Sun and Moon, which were amazing games in their own right, but I did not like how similar Ultra Sun and Moon were. Um, I was really hoping it would take the form of like Black 2 and White 2, not to say that those are exceptional games, but to be more of a sequel rather than just an alternate if that makes sense. And the last full game I played in 2018, which I did not fully complete, but it would probably be between this game and Smash Bros. Ultimate to say which game I enjoyed the most. I'd put Mario Odyssey up there as well, but the game I am talking about is Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation 1. Yes, not even close to the same era as the other games we've discussed, but I got a PlayStation 1 at the end of last year, at the end of 2017, thanks to friend of the program, not only friend of the program, but another co-founder of the channel, Austin, who I am using in battle right now, gifting me a PlayStation 1, and did he give me Final Fantasy or did I buy it? I actually don't remember. I, th I think out of the goodness of his heart, he may have given me the game to, or else given me an exceptional deal on it, but I am famously known for loving Final Fantasy X, which I played on the PlayStation 2 when I was in college. It was, this is not a hot take, it was my favorite RPG of all time. Final Fantasy X, play it if you have not. Um, I believe there's a Switch port for it, so I might be picking that up. But I enjoyed Final Fantasy VII a lot as well. I think the music was better than Final Fantasy X or X. Um, I did think the graphics were not quite the same. Of course, we're comparing two different systems anyways. But I will say between not only the graphics being a little better, uh, cleaner on Final Fantasy X, and it being a game that I've played through all the way versus just partial, I would give the slight nod to Final Fantasy X, but I enjoyed the heck out of VII, um, as well as just the PlayStation 1 in general. So I am probably one of the few people in the gaming community who spent 2018 primarily playing 3DS, Switch, and PlayStation 1. But hey, you gotta do what you enjoy, and I enjoyed those experiences quite a bit. And probably will continue... Final Fantasy VII is at the top of my backlog for once I complete Mario Odyssey, which I'm about three quarters of the way through, and Smash Bros. I'm over halfway unlocking characters. We'll be there in no time. Um, it's at the top of my backlog just below... Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was a Christmas gift from friend of the program Kevin, the Pidgeotto, and Kevin was gracious enough to gift me that for Christmas, and oh, now I'm thinking of our, our boy Verners. This really triggers me that we're seeing Raticates at level 16, because that is fake news. We looked it up. 
We looked it up and it does not evolve till 20. I'm not happy about that. I'm really not happy about that, but I was I was nearly moved to tears with the tribute we gave to Verners in the last episode. Um, he will be missed. Did I give him a lot of crap? Of course. Yikes, that did a lot of damage. That did a lot of damage, and in no way am I going to risk these biscuits here. I think going to Kevin is going to be our best move. But just to spite us for letting our boy Verners go down, we have this Raticate just putting in the finest of work against us, using a quick attack against our own, and I am surprised that its speed stat is higher than, than a Pidgeotto level 19. That surprises me a little bit. But nonetheless, we defeat the Junior Trainer, take a little more lunch money, and we are now in Vermilion City. I was totally envisioning the SSN music, so <laughs> a little off on uh, what I was expecting to hear there, but I do also enjoy the Vermilion City music. And we can heal up the team and continue. Of course, there is a route to the right. Um, besides that, we have the SSN and the gym soon after that. But let's jump into this house real quick. We have a man who says, I'm the fishing guru. I simply love fishing. Do you like to fish? Yes, actually. This reminds me of an old Scotty and Austin story from the pre-game slam days. This is back in the tie-dye film days. Me and Austin used to fish next to his house. And I'm not even making this up. Talking about the Rattata we, who we laid to rest last episode. Um, we used to go fishing and drink Verners. Kid you not, we used to go fishing and drink Verners. And uh, at one point, we got in a Verner's fight and threw some of that beloved ginger ale at each other. Good times. Good times that I miss. Sim simpler times. Certainly simpler times. But good times nonetheless. So let's check this house out. I believe this is the Pokemon Fan Club. I am the chair of the Pokemon. I chair the Pokemon Fan Club. I have collected over 100 Pokemon. I'm very fussy when it comes to Pokemon. So, did you come to visit to hear about my Pokemon? We do have to hear his story, but I'm not going to read it because anyone who's played this remembers how long this old man drags on. But, to his credit, he does love Pokemon just about as much as we do. And to listen, for listening to him, he gives us the bike voucher, which I will probably just get on our way back to Rock Tunnel. We don't really need it at this point. So let's see what uh, what old Lady McGee says. Do you have a Spiro? Do you want to trade it for Farfetch'd? Hmm. We do have a Spiro. We do have Master Ball the Spiro. I really so I really see I'm gargling my words all the time here, but I really see no reason not to make that trade. Not that I plan on using this Farfetch'd right away, but I really don't see a reason why. Um, granted, Firo is probably a better Pokemon than Farfetch'd, but I've never used a Farfetch'd before. So if it comes down to it, and I'm not going to jinx it by saying what would bring us to use a different flying type if you catch my drift because we don't want to even entertain that idea i would i'd rather use farfetch just for swag points than master ball the spiro so master ball you brought us a good story way back when you served the team well just looking pretty there but we are going to say goodbye and trade you to this other trainer and I think this is fair in terms of Nuzlocke rules because we're not getting an additional Pokemon, we're just trading one of our encounters. Um, it's actually really lower odds that we could make this trade because in our limited encounter chances we were able to get a Spearow. 
So I'm curious what level this Farfetch is going to be, because we just traded a level 5 Spiro. And that would be kind of OP if we got like a level 15 or something. So it is at the level we traded, which is fair. Um, and it has Peck and Sand Attack. So we have Ducks the Farfetch'd. As you see, the layout is unchanged because I do not plan on using it at this time. So I will deposit Ducks the Farfetch'd. And as I was alluding to earlier, now that we've explored the city, our options are the SSN and um, the route to the right. And the reason I am holding off on the route to the right for the moment is I, I just want to check off screen what our chances of encountering certain Pokemon are um, before wasting you beautiful people's time. So I'm really gargling on how we get to the SS Sand. I think it's to the right and, yep, it's to the right and down here. I'm just looking over here for funsies. We do have Diglett's Cave before the route here. Would I even want to use a Diglett? I, I don't know, but it is an encounter, and I see no reason to not take advantage of it. So let's put Hornisplay in the front, not in second, and let's see if we get a Diglett or Dugtrio. Let me check Pokeballs first. Four is a little skimpy. Where's a little skimpy? I did not restock Pokeballs off screen. So I'm going to pick up a few more at the Mart. Now that we're kind of just dripping in chatter here, I'm going to pick up like six. Give us a clean ten. Ooh, and Super Potions are available. We got the cash. We got the cash. Shout out to Nugget Bridge. I'm going to plan on only using those in more dire battle circumstances, but it is nice that we can have super potions now. But in the meantime, let's see what we encounter in this tunnel. Um, it would have kind of made sense to do this encounter after um, the SSN because once we get cut, we can go through the cave below Viridian Forest and pick up an item, but... Looking at a level 17 Diglett could be a nice potential member to the team. Um, we already do have a ground type with Cornus Boy here, so I don't see a huge benefit to using Diglett. Um, and also, I did want to comment on why we're not using Dats Right the Meowth. Um, but before that, we will nickname this Diglett, just to give it something. Uh, I think we can fit... We'll see if we can fit uh, the usual name. Oh, we can't quite. We can't. So, I usually name it Mole Man Mole, but we'll just name it Mole Man because that is the best we can fit for this Diglett. We're going to run from uh, this other Mole Man Mole which is level 18, so we did slightly miss out here, but no worries, no worries. Um, but to comment on Dats Right the Meowth, the reason I am holding off for the moment is I want to fully switch train A-Bag into Gyarados form, and I don't want to focus on other low-level members of the team until that point. Um, but I am think I am given second thoughts to Mole Man Mole here. It's level 17. It's already at a point where it could contribute to the party. We're going into an electric gym. So rather than depositing, I am gonna hold on to Mole Man Mole. I'm gonna add him to the party. You never know when you need another bit of death fodder, and that is uh, way too soon to be making those remarks after what we went through emotionally last episode. But with that. That's going to wrap up today's episode. We will continue with the SSN next time, but thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like down below if you enjoyed today. And uh, me and Sergio wish you the happiest of New Year's. We'll see you next time. Game Slam, signing off.